With a first class saw cut, we're looking for the most precision that we can get. These are typically going to be joinery cuts. Something like the shoulder cuts, or maybe even the cheek cuts of a mortise and tenon joint. In these cases, we're going to again use the knife just like we did in the second class saw cut, but we're going to score even deeper and we're going to make a relief for the saw to drop into because we want to make sure that this saw cut is exactly where we want it to be. I'm going to lay out this first class saw cut very similarly to how I laid out the second class saw cut. I have my reference marks and I'm going to reference my square off of those. I'm going to score deeply around all four sides of our tenon. In this case, this tenon doesn't actually have to fit anything. This is just going to be a sample piece. So I'm going to score very deeply. And my first cut is not full depth. My first pass with the knife is very light. And that's because I don't want the knife to drift away from the square. Each pass with the knife is going to be successively deeper until I have a nice, nice, deep score line. Now in this case, since we're going to do a sample tenon, I'm going to lay out some tenon cheeks as well. So essentially, what I've just done is laid out this part of the joint. This is the mortise, this is the tenon. The tenon goes into the mortise and it makes a very strong joint. So obviously we want this to be cut very precisely in order for it to fit like this. Now here's where the first class cut differs from the second class cut. I'm going to take a chisel or a knife and I'm going to create a little trough. I'm going to pair or cut right into that space that I cut with my marking knife. This is going to ensure that when I put my saw in there, it's going to drop right into that little trough or knife wall, as some people call it, and sit right against that hard edge. So we're going to get a nice clean cut. We're going to get a very, very precise cut. So here's an example of using your marking knife along these tenon cheeks here. Okay, so chisel or knife. The knife tends to follow the grain a little bit more. Uh, especially on this long grain. But we're creating a very crisp edge there that we can ride our saw against. I'm going to start by sawing our tenon cheeks, and I'm going to do this in the vise. And that saw drops very nicely right into that line.
And now cutting the shoulders, again, we have that nice channel for our saw to sit right in. And our saw perfectly follows that line. And we have a perfect tenon. Now you might ask, why go through all that extra work during layout uh, just to drop the saw in the line a little bit closer? Wouldn't it be easier just to saw a little bit wide of the line, leave the tenon thick or fat, and then dress it up with a file or a chisel or a plane until it fits into its mortise? Well, you could do that. There's no reason, um, I mean, it's a viable option. However, consider when you're making mortise and tenon joints, there are usually more than just one. And while it may take an extra five minutes to go and lay out and, and chisel that little, um, that little wall or that, that little channel for the saw on each of those tenons before you go to your sawing, it may take five, 10, 15 minutes to fit this tenon if you leave it fat and have to then fit it to its mortise. And you may fuss with it for an extra 10 or 15 minutes. Well, if you're building a table, you're going to have at least eight tenons that you have to mess around with. If it takes you an extra 15 minutes to fuss with each one of those tenons, you're looking at an extra two hours of work just to make those mortise and tenon joints. Whereas it may have taken you an extra five minutes just to go ahead and chisel that little trough for the, soft to, for the saw to ride in, and then that tenon fits the mortise perfectly right off the saw, and you avoid all that extra fiddling with the joint. So when it comes to a first class saw cut, my opinion is it makes all the difference in the world. It's much more efficient and much more accurate and precise to use that knife wall or that trough to set your saw into. And you're gonna find that your joinery will fit off the saw with much less fiddling much more often.